Let's talk politics. Sheila Jackson Lee is a congresswoman from Texas who's running for mayor of Houston, H-Town. <laughs> Although based on some leaked audio that just came out, you know who's not voting for her? Her staff. Where is it? What, what date was it? Oh, from yesterday. Sure, Rom took it upstairs. I have to call. I, I don't want you to do a goddamn thing. I want you to have a brain. I want you to have read it. I want you to say, Congresswoman, it was such and such a date. That's what I want. That's the kind of staff that I want to have. I need to uh, ensure my um, schedule. And, uh, you know, if they boo boo did it, shit ass did it, face did it. And nobody knows a goddamn thing in my office. Okay? Nothing. I gave it to you. Your job was to get it on the calendar, not to hold Jerome happen. Okay? So when I called Jerome, he only me sit up there like a fat ass, stupid idiot, talking about uh, what the f he doesn't know. Okay? Both of y'all are f up the fing app. It's the worst shit that I could ever have put together. Two goddamn big ass children. F***ing idiots. Serve no goddamn purpose. Goddamn! Oh. Listen, if you get an older black woman to talk like that, you f all the way up. <laughs> Listen, only way you're getting out of this, fake a heart attack. <laughs> but it's nice to know Democrats can get angry about something, because usually they're really meek, like, I guess we won't pay off these student loans, oh well. Meanwhile, she's like, hey, what fat ass f***ed up my calendar? <laughs> Damn it, Jerome! You know what? C-SPAN would be the number one channel in America if Congress could talk like this. <laughs> Good afternoon, esteemed colleagues and mother <laughs> A lot of you dumb ass Base shit rags been running your nasty little mouth regarding spending bill HR 337. You little shits are really as stupid as you oak. I yield my time. But good news for Sheila, because Congress has way bigger issues to deal with right now. Republicans are trying to figure out a new Speaker of the House. And surprise, surprise. Even Republicans don't like other Republicans. On Friday, House Republicans dropped Jim Jordan of Ohio as the nominee in a secret ballot after his three failed attempts to get elected. He's out. He's out. He's out. He's out. At least nine Republicans are now vying to be the Speaker of the House, setting the stage for a new candidate forum tomorrow. Among the contenders, Byron Donalds of Florida, retired Marine Corps Lieutenant General Jack Bergman of Michigan, and Majority Whip Tom Emmer of Minnesota, who's backed by ousted Speaker Kevin McCarthy. That's right, they got nine Republicans running for Speaker now. I'm gonna be honest, I kinda wanna root for Byron. I feel like he might be my guy. I mean, <laughs> no particular reason. <laughs> But for real, though, look at this group of contenders. It looks like someone put a bottle of Hershey syrup in the mayonnaise aisle. <laughs> Yo. <laughs> All these white dudes look the same. In fact, three of them are the same guy, and you didn't even notice. <laughs> That's how similar they all are. <laughs> if you ask me, Byron could win this thing easy. All he has to do is say, vote for me, and I'll let you say it. Yeah, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> oh, I'm kidding. You know they already say it. Um, immigrants are the lifeblood of New York City. Mm -hmm. Our mayor, Eric Adams, he said we can't handle anymore in here. <laughs> you represent one of the most diverse districts in Congress. Mm -hmm. What can be done at the federal level to help? Well, here's the thing, is that I think whether from, from all parts of the political spectrum, one of the biggest issues that we have when it comes to immigration is the fact that we have an undocumented population. Mm -hmm. Now you can fix that by trying to build a wall or you can fix that by trying to document people and create a path to citizenship. Mm -hmm. And um, we'll have folks that might say, look at these systems, you know, that our shelter system has weight and things like that. But one of the reasons that our public systems 
experience wait is because people don't have a documented and reliable path to work and sustain themselves, mm -hmm. just like all of our ancestors did and our, and our grandparents and great grandparents. You know, I always love when people talk about like, oh, well, you know, my great grandfather came and he wrote his name wrong on a book and now he's a yes. citizen. And <laughs> like, can we put two and two together uh, that, okay. that our processes today are so difficult mm -hmm. that they make our immigration process difficult. But that doesn't mean that immigrants do not create a positive contribution to our country and our economy and our society. And so the answer should really be, we should make it easier to be legal, documented, and a citizen of the United States of America. Right there, right there. Well, it was great talking to you. Thank you for coming. Give it up for Congresswoman Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, AOC from the BA. You consider yourself a real New Yorker? Definitely, yes. Were Definitely. you born here? I was born here. Uh, Fort Greene, Brooklyn, Brooklyn Hospital. That's how you know he's a real New Yorker. He told me the hospital. I did not <laughs> ask him. Okay? This is what we do. We are obnoxious like that. Are you a New Yorker? I consider myself a New Yorker. You consider yourself a New Yorker? I moved here from Hong Kong when I was four years old. Is there like one event that happened that you're like, damn it, I went through that, I'm a New Yorker? Or is it just the whole experience? Really the whole experience. I mean, even this itself is an experience I would really? consider, yeah. What do you feel is the most New York thing you've ever seen? Probably when Jay-Z brought uh, Oprah to Mossy. Shaboy! Now, as a New Yorker, what borough has the worst guys? The worst guys? I would say the Bronx. <laughs> How do you catch a stray? What, what, what's wrong with the Bronx? I just feel like the Bronx is dirty, no offense. What about uptown in the Bronx? You ever been? I don't freak with the Bronx, bro. Here Sorry. we go with the Sorry. Bronx. It's just far, bro. It's, it's a far ass train ride. It is like, far. The most crazy shit I've seen, I, seen, I was on Fordham Road mm -hmm. and Grand Concourse, and a crackhead went right in the middle of the, of the street and just took a shit. That's the most crazy shit I've seen so far. To be fair, is that crazy for Fordham Road? Nah, uh, for Fordham Road. That's regular nah, Bronx. That's regular Bronx. Yeah. Regular Bronx yeah. Yeah. As every New Yorker has one of these, I have to ask you what's yours. Your go-to bodega order. Chopped cheese. Chopped cheese? No, okay. yeah, I go with that one. The hero yeah. or the roll? The roll. Ooh, okay. It was a lot, especially in the morning. Too much meat? No, too, yes. Yeah, yo, hey, hey. Uh, let me get a BLT. Mm. Mayonnaise, salt, pepper, extra tomato. You want me to say bacon, egg, and cheese? I don't. I don't. I, that's I stereotypical. Know. That's what you want me to say. If you said that, that though. means you're a transplant or an undercover <laughs> cop. We're not falling for it. It's time for some financial news. The Daily Show is a serious show. I know some people expect me to come on here and do my thing where I just roast people but I, that I have beef with, but this is a serious show. This is a serious chair, serious desk, and now I'm gonna give you some important financial news. So important, I have to put on my spectacles. I report on the serious financial news. Popular radio host DJ Envy now distancing himself from an alleged multi-million dollar fraud scheme. Not DJ Envious. <laughs> was never on my radar. Go on. Federal agents arresting his longtime friend and one-time business partner, Cesar Pena, on charges of wire fraud, accusing him of a Ponzi-like real estate scheme that allegedly defrauded investors out of millions. Pena often appeared on The Breakfast Club, a top 20 iHeartRadio show with millions of listeners and YouTube subscribers to promote real estate investment. He also held seminars and created YouTube videos with DJ Envy. DJ Envy has not been charged in connection with the case, but many of the alleged victims say they were influenced by his celebrity status. Mm, 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 mm. <laughs> wow, DJ Envy is in trouble for real estate fraud. What a serious story. It's definitely not funny. There's certainly nothing personal that makes it funny to me. It's not like Rashawn accosted me on the radio for making a little joke about him and his wife, which I only thought we were friends. It's not like he called me dickhead and then got so mad he locked himself in the studio for the rest of the show and then told the building security that I was a threat. But even if that happened, that's all in the past. <laughs> I'm just reading the news, listen. Apparently, the news is DJ Envy might go to jail for an alleged Ponzi scheme flipping houses in New Jersey. That's not hilarious, it's tragic, because he's just a DJ. I mean, there's no way he could have known he might have been involved in a Ponzi scheme, right? When I first got into real estate, I called three people. I called Clue, mm -hmm. I called Fabulous, mm -hmm. I called Joe Button. Joe Button told me it was a Ponzi scheme and I was gonna go to jail. That clip is not funny. We are not laughing at this. We're also not asking who's the dickhead now. <laughs> I'm being serious. Look at these spectacles. This could have happened to anybody. 
Whenever I'm doing financial transactions, I also get advice from Joe Button, Fabulous, and DJ Clue. <laughs> Everybody knows those are the Lehman Brothers of hip hop. <laughs> and look, I don't want Envy to go to prison. I mean, imagine getting locked up for one of the corniest crimes in hip hop history. <laughs> this is a Property Brothers ass crime. Forget the Bloods, he's gonna have to join the House Hunters. But again, I'm just doing the news, and the news is that DJ Envy is a DJ, a man who turns tables. And now, the tables have turned. <laughs> Let's kick things off with big news about the speaker race in Congress. After spending three weeks on the dating scene, Republicans are finally swiping right, <laughs> far right. Breaking news out of Washington, House lawmakers finally elected the next Speaker of the House. After 22 days, 14 candidates and four nominees, House Republicans united to elect Congressman Mike Johnson of Louisiana, the new Speaker of the House. Republicans finally named conservative Congressman Mike Johnson. And uh, it's about time. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. America's new Speaker of the House is some dude named Mike Johnson. <laughs> I'll be, be honest, that sounds like the name you give a hotel when you're checking in after having an affair. <laughs> hey, uh, my, my name is, uh, my, Mike Johnson. <laughs> you rent rooms by the hour? <laughs> now, if you don't know Mike Johnson, don't worry. Nobody else does. <laughs> But what we do know is that he wants nationwide limits on abortion. He wants to criminalize gay sex. And he even wants to ban reggaeton. All right, I'm lying on the last one. <laughs> but that seems like his vibe because he comes off as a dick. And the one other thing people know about this dude, he was one of the main guys trying to steal the election for Donald Trump. But apparently, he doesn't want to talk about that anymore. Johnson is a staunch Trump ally who recruited Republicans to sign on to efforts to overturn the 2020 election. I asked him if he stands by that vote. Johnson, you helped lead the efforts to Someone come get their Nana. <laughs> so at first when I saw that reaction, I was like, damn, that was a lot. But then I learned the reporter who asked the question was black. Oh. Then it started to make a little more sense. Especially when I found out the shut up lady is named Virginia. <laughs> and she represents North Carolina. Oh. That's a lot of Southern heritage right there. I bet you she was born in some small town named Plantationville or something. Where was she born? Oh. <laughs> Shit. Oh, she from the BX? Mm. Wow. BX all day. Wait. Yo. I remember her. Yo! Yo, she used to be on the block. That's Jenny from 149, yo! We went to high school together. She got old as shit. Oh, man, I'll see you at the reunion, though. Do you feel you're one of the best trash talkers in the WNBA? When I tell you I'm not even a trash talker, I'm, I'm not. This particular moment blew up and it makes me look like such... Now I'm loving it. A douchebag. I, I'm loving your villain era. I'm like, I didn't even know I would be in it, but I'm like, people, I'm, I'm trolling people at this point online, because yeah. I don't care. They're like, you only had two points. She's got two points, how's she on the Daily Show? That's gonna be them Yeah. today. I mean, speaking of two points, it kind of got cooked on Twitter today by Asia. I know, right? Okay. It'd be your own teammates. It'd be your own teammates. She said, you thought the whole team was going to see Usher? <laughs> and she tweeted in response to you, LOL, 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 LOL. Sid scores two points in game four and thinks she gonna get Usher tickets. Oh. <laughs> wow. You gonna take that? I'm not gonna take that. I responded to it. I know you saw that. Okay. Is this like playful rivalry? This is for sure. I love like, that. Yes, man. This, this like, we haven't seen that before in the WNBA. Just like even like the rivalry between the Liberty and you, but it's like, so yeah. you guys respect each other on such a level. For sure. It's like, when you got a sibling or you got cousins that you grew up with, like, you rag on each other, you joke on each other, but you love them. Let's kick things off with the Supreme Court Justice, who's accepted more gifts than Make-A-Wish kids, Clarence <laughs> Thomas! <laughs> so every day there's a new story about Thomas accepting lavish gifts from his rich-ass friends and not reporting any of it. And now Thomas is in more hot water because someone bought him a jacuzzi. <laughs> 
just kidding. It was an RV. Clarence Thomas has been an RV evangelist for decades, traveling the country in a 40-foot luxury motor coach that he purchased in 1999 after borrowing more than a quarter of a million dollars from a wealthy friend. But a new report from Democrats on the Senate Finance Committee alleges Thomas's friend forgave a substantial amount of that massive loan, and nine years later, his friend forgave all the debt. The IRS considers debt forgiveness as a form of income, but Thomas never reported it on his financial disclosure forms, a likely violation of federal ethics rules. And he never reported it on his tax returns, potentially owing money to the IRS. His longtime friend Anthony Welters, who loaned him that money, he is defending this arrangement, saying, quote, I loaned a friend money. We've all been on one side or the other of that equation. <laughs> Uh, no, we have not, okay? <laughs> I've never had a friend just give me, I don't know, $250,000? <laughs> Hell, last week, I bummed a cigarette from my guy, Tommy. He sent me a Venmo request. <laughs> I do have a question for Clarence's rich friend. Um, you, you wanna hang some time? Like, <laughs> yo, let's catch a Knicks game. I got courtside seats and we paid for them. <laughs> But low-key, I'm disappointed in Clarence. If you're gonna take a bribe, it should be extravagant, like gold bars and diamonds. This is depressing. You bill an abortion because you want someone else to let you drive a bus? <laughs> also, they said that driving RVs is Clarence Thomas' favorite thing in the world. Look at my man's face. <laughs> this is what Clarence Thomas looks like when he's happy. I'm enjoying this. <laughs> Hooray.